Hello everyone, it's such a blessing coming your way once again and we believe that God has a word for you. We are so delighted about what we're going to be sharing today. Fred is with me once again. It's always a blessing sharing Thank the word with you. Thank you. And I believe that we are set for an exciting moment. Glory, Glory to God. Alright, today we want to talk about something very, very important. You know, it got to, uh, like, uh, I think some days ago or so, I just started hearing people talk about... Uh, what we might call cause and effect, but it was coming in form of uh, different questions about do we as believers receive uh, the consequences for our sins that have been confessed to God? And uh, I discovered that it's like, uh, I don't know why, but I just started getting uh, questions, like at least I can remember three questions. And I went online and I saw someone you know, addressing it and it like just became uh, something I, I, like I was thinking about you know, at that moment and I feel it's something that we have to you know, talk about mm. because I, I know that there are many of God's people who are actually having uh, troubles with this particular issue. Like uh, the main question is, if I sin as a Christian now, we're, we're actually confining it to, uh, uh, to to the Christian fold now. Mm. You know, not everyone. Mm. Sure. The question is, as a believer, if I confess my sins to the Lord, do I still receive the consequences of those sins? Mm. You know, and uh, it's it, it, like uh, a lot of people have different opinions about that. But I think the word of God, or rather we know that the word of God is the final authority on such matters, or every matter, mm -hmm. praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so we want to talk about that today. We want to see what God's word says about consequences for sin. Mm -hmm. Do believers receive the consequences mm -hmm. for their sins? Mm -hmm. And so I want us to look at God's word. But before we go into that, I want to get your understanding on that. I want you to share uh, briefly on what you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's it's quite a good topic, and I remember a long time ago we were sharing that with a friend too about that. We didn't really go deep in in the whole gist, but I believe we kind of had a touch in it. It's a lot of questions in Christians' mind. Mm -hmm. They want to know, okay, you know, this and this and that. But I I think my my take on it is. Everything must be judged in the light of the word. Okay. You know, before we can be able to. <laughs> now, you know, you know to I want to get a yeah. yes or a no. <laughs> <laughs> I would want to give a yes or no, but in the light of scripture. Okay. You know, when you're talking about dicey things, you know, I'm concerned about people who just hear things without proper foundation or a depth understanding of what you mean or the spirit of what you mean okay. and just speak it and just run away with it right. but it's always good when we see things in the light of scripture sometimes people just do things based on something they just cooked up in their mind mm. but if the word of god is the final authority that we have mm. and we believe it's the word of god and it says something then it becomes something that we want to live by you know I, I, i'm thinking about the fact that uh, many times I think one of the things we as believers need to pay attention to, and I, I believe this is very, very important, especially in the times we live, mm. is that we need to understand, uh, we need to be very, very conscious about the source of our knowledge, sure. where the knowledge we have about the thing is coming from. Mm. You know, there are people who are okay with just hearing that pastor said this, <laughs> or that brother said this, or that man of God said this. Mm. They don't even care about studying God's word, finding out for themselves. And I discovered that faith does not come from hearing pastor. Mm -hmm. Faith comes by your own knowledge of God's word. Mm -hmm. It has to be personal. Sure. You know, because there's, there's a connection. You know, sometimes we look at faith as a tool, mm -hmm. just something we use in getting what we want. Mm -hmm. But I discovered that faith is based on a relationship. You have to know, is it that they that know their God mm -hmm. shall be strong and do exploit. Now, talking about consequences. Mm -hmm. I started understanding because getting these questions, I, I went before the Lord, of course, because I don't just want to say yes, I just don't want to say no. And definitely, you know, like we were sharing yesterday, you know, uh, you said I've done all mm -hmm. I should do or all that there is to do about a matter, mm -hmm. not knowing that you just did all that you knew <laughs> about that matter. So you're actually limited by your knowledge of that uh, or the situation. So I started understanding this from what the Lord was showing me in my spirit, like and they're understanding that there's what people don't understand when it comes to consequences. When we ask questions like, do I get consequences for my sins and all of that? What people don't understand is the difference between the consequences and the harvest for our actions. Mm. You know, for example, when the Word of God tells us about a uh, 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 consequence for sin, there's just one consequence for sin. Mm. So for the wages of sin is death. Is death. Mm. Now when we talk about death, of course, death 
actually means the word death, if you check the Hebrew word or even the Greek word, it actually means separation. You know, so there's physical death, there's spiritual death, there's, uh, there's uh, eternal death, of course. Physical death is the separation of the spirit and soul from the body. Mm -hmm. That's the one most people know about. The spiritual death is separation from God. You know, you are separated from your source, mm -hmm. from life himself. You see, so, and then the other one is eternal mm -hmm. for those who don't receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and they die in their sins, they will be cast into the lake of fire, which the Bible calls eternal death. Mm -hmm. So, the wages of sin, which is actually consequences, is death. So, by virtue of that understanding, I can boldly say that if you are a believer, you're born again, you ask Jesus to come into your heart and you confess your sins to God, probably you did something wrong, you know, because we are in the flesh. The Bible says we are in the flesh, we do not walk uh, no, uh, yeah, by, through the, uh, no sense, uh, the senses and all of that. But we, there are chances that we might make mistakes, you know, and that's why God made provision. You know, by the blood of Jesus Christ. In First John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, If you confess your sins, he said you can count on his faithfulness. Mm. That he is faithful and just mm. to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Mm. What was the Lord saying to us there? That the consequences of sins are dealt with. Mm. The moment you ask the Lord to forgive you. So, as a Christian, having asked the Lord to forgive you uh, your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, actually, no consequences. When the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are now for the world there is consequence now we already say that the consequences of sins or the consequence of whatever sin you know amazingly when the bible talks about uh, the wages of sin the word sin they going by uh, or like when you study the book of romans you discover that the word sin it was used about for something times and out of those for the something times only two times it actually refers to sin as an act every other time it refers to sin as the nature the nature is the real thing. And so when he says the wages of sin, it's dealing with the heart, the, the, the very uh, source of sin. That that is, it's kind of the wages, the payment for a life of sin. That's one who is not even born again. He said it's death. So but now, the act of sin, now that's what people ask you know, when they say, uh, if I do something wrong. So they are dealing with the act. So having done, uh, uh, dealt with the, uh, the nature of sin, God also dealt with the, the act by giving us provision. So that in, if, if we make, miss it, if we make a mistake, we sin against God or whatever, we can clean up. Mm. And that scripture still applies. There is no condemnation, no consequence for sin. Mm. Now, what the other side of it, we talked about consequence, you know, and then the other side, uh, it's actually harvest. Mm. Harvest is what most people deal with <laughs> and actually think it's going to Now, I want us to see something in the light of that. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Let's just read that so that we can... Genesis yeah. chapter 8 verse 22. 22. Yeah. The Bible says, While the earth remains, yeah. seed time and harvest, mm -hmm. and cold and heat, mm -hmm. and winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. Wow. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to say something about that. Well, wow, that's powerful. Well, for, for me, I think the the light you actually brought to this, okay. I've actually not seen it that way before. The aspect of consequences and harvest mm -hmm. uh, 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 I, I, I would say I've just drawn something so powerful from you know, yeah. you know I think that's the problem we always have mm -hmm. on earth there are laws mm -hmm. and principles that God has set in motion yes, sir. and God doesn't go against these laws mm -hmm. he said them he said them yeah. God has power over them mm -hmm. But these laws are designed for this realm. Yeah. And for so long you are in this realm, yeah. you are yeah. also within the functions or the flow of this law. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I remember one time I was reading something online during this time of uh, global warming, yeah. where the, earth, the forests, deforestations, and all of those things happening on the earth. I remember somebody shared something, and it was quoting actually the scripture, you know, in, in, in I, I don't know, he was trying to take a stand on the concept of this global warming, you know, that scientists say it's a time is coming when the earth will not be habitable, we can't have food to eat anymore and all of those things. And a pastor actually quoted this scripture and was like, God has already made a promise, he has already declared it's a, a law. <laughs> it's a law. That for so long the Hallelujah. earth remains, seed time and harvest time Hallelujah. will never cease. It's, it's a law upon the earth. Now, talking about what we're dealing with, cause and effect, yeah, you know, that's just the spirit of it. Mm -hmm. The consequences, as a result of being in Christ, the consequences has been dealt with. Oh, hallelujah. But the harvest 
is what we reap as a result of the law mm. that functions upon the earth. Mm. For example, gravity. Uh. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you are in Christ or not. When you jump up the sky, according to the law of gravity, <laughs> Definitely, you are going to come down. Except you are led to jump. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's always an exception when no, the law of course, is <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. But as far as the laws are concerned, as far as, as far as the laws are concerned, it's something that must take effect. So to surely, I, I remember a brother was sharing one time about somebody, a brother who slept with another lady, mm. and after the whole act, it was a mistake. From the way his response and all of those things, repentance and all that. He, took, he actually came out genuinely asking for repentance, feeling sorry and all of those things. But after some months, it was discovered she was pregnant. And the brother got mad and was like, thought, God, I thought I asked for forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I, I feel that's where we're coming from. You know, you're, you're actually, able to you're actually between... took my, the example I wanted to give. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's so powerful in the light sure. of what we've been sharing sure. because we, we're talking about two sides to it. You know, the consequence and the harvest. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was the, that, that example just, that was one of the examples that the Lord gave to me in, you know, helping me understand that, mm -hmm. you know, because the consequence, the moment you ask the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry I did this, mm -hmm. you're forgiven. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that God doesn't even think about your sin. He doesn't remember. I mean, many people are remembering things that God has forgotten. Wow. God decided to forget. He mm -hmm. said that your sins I will remember mm -hmm. no more. The moment you come before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I messed up. I receive forgiveness. No, many people don't receive forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Just say, Lord, forgive. No, mm -hmm. I receive forgiveness for my sins and the cleansing mm -hmm. of the blood and all of that and in Jesus name Amen. the moment you do that mm -hmm. according to God's word mm -hmm. it never happened sure but then the physical act has been done mm -hmm. and that lady is pregnant you don't lay hands on the belly and say Be belly <laughs> be gone <laughs> be gone you know why because it's a law sure. a seed has been sown now that thing about harvest brings us to the place of seed because it can't be a harvest without a seed mm -hmm. so Anytime when we think about consequences, really most of the time what we should be thinking about is actually the seed. Mm -hmm. You don't want to sow a seed of something you don't want to harvest. It's like you don't want to uh, 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 sow, if you don't want, uh, 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 let's say mango for example, you don't want to sow the seed of, I mean, sow the seed of mango into the soil. You want something that you want, like when you don't say love your enemies, you to, uh, I mean, pray for those who persecute you and all of that. What, what was he really doing? He was helping us understand that have control over the seed you sow. Mm -hmm. Don't let someone make you sow a seed of a harvest you don't want. Sure. So because he did this to me, I want to retaliate. Now, that's not it. There's a law going on there. Mm -hmm. You said it. there's nothing like, okay, God will say because uh, uh, he told so this person who wronged this other one, he was only reacting. So he just, no, it doesn't work that way. There's a law out there that it doesn't have respect for any individual. Mm -hmm. The moment you put it to work, it works for you. Mm -hmm. If you work against it, it works against you. Sure. So you see that there's harvest for the wrongdoing. So many times we are actually dealing with the harvest of certain actions that we've taken. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and by God's mercy, God helps us through those moments, of course. But we need to understand that as far as sin is concerned, God has dealt with sin once and for all in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So anything that has to do with sin, the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation. So the main thing we are dealing with right now is the harvest. And I, I was thinking, I think, I can't remember if it was you sharing with that the other time. I was like, really many times what we call problems, if we really think deeply and if we are sincere with ourselves, we're only dealing with the harvest of seeds mm. that we've sown. Sometimes years ago, mm. you know, we kind of sowed seeds. We were not even thinking about mm. the consequences and, I mean, the, 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 uh, the, the harvest. Mm. Then it just started showing up. Mm. But the beautiful thing is that, uh, let me even put it to you, can we do something about the harvests of our seeds? Hmm. Yeah, I was about <laughs> asking you that. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I, as you were sharing there, I was about asking that. Okay. Can we deal with what was, what was the question? Yeah, can we, can we can we do something about a harvest? Like you sow a seed of something you don't want mm -hmm. and it's germinating. Of course, you know you've not seen it, but you know that payday is coming. <laughs> can you do something to undo? I don't think there's anything that can be done. Okay. I don't think there's anything that can well let an example of let's say you sow you sow a seed of corn mm -hmm. and definitely you're expected to reap a corn. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure there is any scientific thing that can be done on earth to okay. change the whole process of that. Yeah, but you can uproot it. You can pull out. You can uproot and turn. But we're talking about 
getting the results now. Okay, okay, okay. You know? Okay, let me give you an example. You know, the Bible talks about, like, we're talking about seeds now, you know, in terms of harvest. When I say, a, like, if I speak a word, mm -hmm. either to myself or to someone, I'm actually saying the word seed. You know, I don't know, I, I think there's been a real problem with understanding seed. Many believe, you see, we as believers, we need to understand the concept of the seed. Mm -hmm. Because when you talk seed today, people think money. Because of our idea of, you know, so a seed, you know, in church and all of that. And I think that is an insult to God's principle because mm -hmm. this is so big. We are sowing seeds every day unconsciously. You know, you insulted someone last week. That was a seed. Mm -hmm. You know, you stole something that didn't belong to you. That was a seed. Mm -hmm. And the harvest is piling up. Mm -hmm. You know, but we are so, con I mean, this, I mean, uh, uh, concerned about, don't see that. you know, okay, let's give an example. Someone says, I want to sow a seed for a car, as we do. Like mm -hmm. someone say, if you have a need, sow a seed. I'm like, well, I, I didn't see that in the Bible. <laughs> the Bible actually says, whatever you desire, when ye mm -hmm. pray. Mm -hmm. Of course, prayer is a seed, mm -hmm. you know. So, just say, for example, in quote, someone wants to sow a seed for a car, and he goes to the altar and says, this is my seed for a car, cross over for a car. Mm -hmm. Then he goes out there and he says, this car thing is massive. I don't even know these car things are hard. Mm -hmm. Now he sowed in quotes money seed for a car, and now he's sowing a wrong seed still for that car. So he's conscious of the money seed in his mind. I have sown a seed for my car, but his words you are countering mm -hmm. what you've put in the ground, sure. you know, because sure. God responds to us according to our faith. If that's your faith, you believe that if I sow that seed, God is God, God will honor it. Mm -hmm. But then, we are not so conscious about the seed that we sow every day. And I need to understand that every believer, we as believers, we are bags of seeds. Mm. Every day we sow seed. Sure. Every action is a seed. Sure. Every gesture is a seed. Sure. Every reaction is a seed. Every word is a seed. Sure. And we sow these things every day. Sure. And when we start being conscious of our seeds, we start being uh, aware that uh, you, you, you kind of being care you start becoming careful about your actions and your words and what you do to people and what you say because you know that this is going to come back to you and you don't want that kind of a harvest if you're sowing the wrong seed. So I believe that the same way in the physical we can uh, 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 uproot a crop, something that has been sown, we can also uh, uproot a, a wrong seed. Let's say, for example, I spoke the wrong word. Maybe we're speaking and I'll say, God, Things are hard. I say in the name of Jesus, I retrieve that. These things are not hard. Things are easy for me. You know, of course, there are different things. You know, uh, they are the same way it applies in the natural. It also applies in the spiritual. Of course, talk about seed. Timing has, you know, you can't plant mango to then expect next week to receive a harvest or even next month. Mm -hmm. Some things take time to grow, you know, and, you know, they take root and they build. So I believe that if we start dealing with these things from this angle, we can really turn around a lot of things. Like, I haven't asked a lot to forgive me for my sins. Mm -hmm. Then I go to, what was that seed that I sowed? Mm -hmm. I can take authority according to God's word mm -hmm. and put that out of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, like, now we're, we're talking about the example we gave, that of pregnancy and all of that. Well, that just has to happen. You don't pray for God to kill the baby or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a good thing. So, I believe understanding God's word and God's principles will really help. And understand that faith is a relationship True. and not just a tool. True. You know, we really empower us. I, I don't know if you have something more to say about this. Yeah. So much, so much. I, I think number one is, as we're sharing, one thing that actually comes to my mind is the issue of if we are very conscious of this seed and harvest thing, mm -hmm. I think people don't actually see it from that light. Yeah. Maybe probably that's why people do things anytime, mm. especially in the Christian yeah. You know, there is this generic mindset where people believe if I do something wrong and I prayed about it, God is going to forgive me. Mm. And it's true, mm. correct. Yes, but we don't always see this angle mm. of also there is a seed time and that there is a harvest wow, time. Wow. If we are conscious of these things, I think it's going to help the way we relate to the day-to-day -day life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And just like you talked about the issue of seed, not just something we sow, not just a money thing, mm. because it's a generic term it's, we talk it's today. A problem. When you tell somebody sow a seed, the first thing that comes to his mind is seed of money. Mm. What about going out to sow a seed of love? I would have even thought that the seed that comes to mind should be corn, at least the, the you know, physical one and, we and, sow. And all but of those somehow things. it's been, the devil, it's, the devil is behind that. It's I been there that. for years. Yeah. You yeah. know, after, when a generation comes and they use a term over and over, somehow 
there is a meaning to that mm. particular word and people mm. just go on with it mm. and all that. Mm. But if we are conscious of these things, it's going to help our day to day. Yes, sir. Yes, God takes away the consequences, yeah. but the harvest yes, is always there. Yes, and like you say, thank God for His love, yes, thank God for His word, thank yes, God for His mercy. Yes, that even when this have, when we sow a wrong seed, yes, thank God for His word that we can counteract. Mm. We can take the wisdom of God to take a stand mm. to 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 take away those things yes, and yes, come afresh and new in yes, God. Sir. I, I mean, I'm just so blessed. You know, it's so powerful. You know, you know I'm blessed. thinking about this. You know, really, the, the body behind this, I, sure. I know that we were speaking to people who are actually uh, concerned. Really, while, while I was meditating on this uh, this morning, I was really so concerned because I, I, I saw in the spirit, like, there are people who are actually accepting the works of the devil in their lives today, believing that they are paying for their sins. Mm. You know, you, you don't have to. Mm. Because, you know, the devil loves mm. deception. That's mm. what he does. Sure. You can live free as a believer. See, understand this. First of all, God has taken care of the consequences of your sins. And then, if you also already, by, by what, based on what we discussed right now, you discover that you've sown the wrong seeds, you can take authority. You know, it's just so amazing that we have authority in Christ Jesus. You know, sometimes, like we said, I've done all there is to do. But you just did all that you knew to do. How about more knowledge? Mm. How about getting to know more of what God's word says about that matter? You know, when the Bible, you know, many times we just use this scripture, we don't think about it. You say, you shall know the truth. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. See, the truth shall make you free. It is the truth that you know, not the one that your pastor communicates. No, I, I'm sorry to talk so much about pastor, because I know we all go to church. Yeah. Sometimes we get used to my sure. pastor. If I saw, like, some time ago, someone said, my pastor said, for God so loved the world. I said, how about the Father is Bible? <laughs> it's the word of God. So it's like our conviction is built on what people say. Mm. You know, we must, we must get to that point where our final authority mm. is not what our bishop, our reverend, uh, whoever said, mm. but God's word. Mm. You know, sometimes we go through some tough moments that bring us into that reality sure. where we say i'm done with listening to sure. whoever i will take whatever is going to come into me i'm going to filter it through mm -hmm. the word of god you know mm -hmm. see you've got to understand the christian life is a life of liberty the bible says where the spirit of the lord is mm -hmm. there is liberty mm -hmm. so the consequence of sin have been dealt with in christ jesus mm -hmm. now when you stand before god your worthiness is not your acts mm -hmm. it's jesus mm -hmm. you know there are people today you know i, I heard is it and roma also made a statement he said that Many times it's even more difficult for believers who have been around in the faith to receive healing mm. or even other blessings of the Lord than, than new converts. Mm. Because it's like we, we, we've gotten to a point where we feel like we have to start deserving mm. God's goodness. You know, I used to say to the Lord personally, I said, Lord, I know I can never deserve a thing from you. Jesus is my worthiness. Mm. When I live right, I'm living it because I love Jesus. I, I want to honor him with my life. He gave me life and I owe it all to him. Glory to God. So we start doing the right things for the right reasons. You know, so even if you do something wrong, the Bible says that if you confess your sins to God, He is faithful. In other words, if He doesn't forgive, He's not faithful. He actually put His faithfulness on the line. He is faithful and just. The Bible says that righteousness and justice are the very foundation of His truth. So the day that God ceases to be just, He's no longer you know, it's no longer good. Mm -hmm. You know, say he's faithful and just to forgive us our, our, our sins and to cleanse us from mm -hmm. all unrighteousness. That's what consequences. Mm -hmm. But then you are now saying, okay, now I understand this. God has taken care of the consequences. And so how about the harvest? Yeah, now you can do something about it. Now, if, if it, there are some of them, like we give example, the pregnancy and all of that, mm -hmm. God will grant you the grace to deal with that, you know. And you don't want to practice that and hope that you escape and all of that. Mm -hmm. Sin is never your friend. Sin is an enemy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the real problem of the world today, mm -hmm. you know. But then you can do something about the harvest. When you notice that you've done something wrong, you so that's why we ask for forgiveness. If I hurt you, I go to you. I say, please, I'm very sorry. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're countering the wrong seeds. Mm -hmm. Of course, you don't want to just do that because you don't want a bad harvest. We are doing it in love. You love your brother. You don't want to hurt him. You don't want to do something wrong. You're doing it for the right reason. But then, you can do something about the harvest that you don't want. That has already The seed has already been sown. You know, you can take authority according to God's word. The Bible says that these are spiritual realities. The Bible says the world was created by the word of God. So, if the word was created, you can counter anything by that same word. You know, so you take authority against that thing. In the name of Jesus, I get this out of my life. You know, and expect it to be so. Amen. Glory to God. I don't know if you want to say something more before we're done with this. So the Bible said the world was framed by the word of God. We, we've not been, we've not been able to 
dive deep more into the, some of those truths. Mm. We understand that when we need money, we confess that I receive it. Mm. God's grace is made abound unto me and all of those things. But also, we don't use it in the aspect of when things go wrong. Mm. When we sow the wrong seed, when we do things like that, there is also power in the word of God mm. that we can use to counteract some of those things. And the more some of the, the more we confess those things, the more the reality dawns in us. The more this reality dawns us, the more it begins to affect our environment. The more it begins to affect the situation itself. Wow. Wow. And before you know, it's a whole total new experience. Wow. Wow. It's just so wrong. Yeah. And there's this normal thought that goes on to on people's mind. I don't know. I think it's just still the effect of religion. Mm. You know, wrong religion, mm. false religion. You know, when you talk about things like you say, keep encouraging people to say, mm. I don't know. What don't we understand about God's word? You know, I, I used to say this. There's nobody who is born again and is in his right senses mm. who we say. Today I'm going to commit three sins. Mm -hmm. I'm going to commit one at 10:45, <laughs> the other one at 4:15, and then the last one by by, <laughs> by 11:55. <laughs> you know, you don't plan, you don't do that. Sure. You know, it's not in your nature. You don't want to sin. Now, the, the, the believer doesn't want to sin. You know, mm -hmm. even there are moments you actually thought mm -hmm. I did it intentionally. No, you didn't. Mm -hmm. It's not in you to sin. It's like the thing that wants to sin in you has, has been taken Amen. away. Amen. We have the nature of righteousness. Sure. Glory to God. Sure. So I want you to understand, if you are laboring under that, and in case you think it's God that's telling you that you are, you are, you are, you are suffering what, whatever you're going through because of your sin, I want you to know it's the devil. It's not God's will. You know, sometimes we don't want to, we think, ah, can it, it can't be the devil. The devil cannot be trying to make me live right. He's not trying to make you live right. When you live under condemnation, you can't live in faith. And it takes faith to walk in righteousness. Sure. You know, so in order to walk, you have to believe what God says about you, that I am righteous. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's no sin standing between. Boy, think about it. He said he forgave it all. Our iniquities. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he dealt with the sin problem before he went to the net. He said, and he, he let all our diseases. All our diseases. Let's Let's just believe God's word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So if you are going through anything today, I want you to know that Amen. God wants to take you out of it. Amen. God is not condemning you. Jesus said, I have not come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Might be saved. Mm -hmm. So God wants you saved. God wants you free.